Hey everybody, welcome back to Sparks Fire and Bailing Wire. It's supposed to get up in the 50s towards the end of the week, and I think that'd be a good opportunity to drag this thing outside and get a pressure wash. So in order to do that, I'm going to try and get as much tore off here as we can so we can get to it. I'm going to start by trying to get this U-joint assembly part on the steering. That way we can get the entire front end off of here. Well, the pin came out easy. Let's see if we can get that U-joint off the shaft. That went way too easy. If the U-joint's disconnected. We should be able to remove the entire steering column, the throttle control, and the hydraulic control. All in one piece. Next, we'll disconnect the wiring harness and get the, all that out of the way. Head over to the other side. Leave that clip on there for the time being. Get rid of the positive cable for the battery. Most of these old tractors, this one included, were a 6 volt system with a positive ground. I'm going to be switching it to a 12 volt system with a negative ground. Just for simplicity's sake. It'll start better, run better. Now this dash, for what there is one, I believe just slides up out of here. All the wiring comes in the bottom here. Except for that, somebody hooked up. This was the kill switch for the tractor. The starter was a rod you pulled to start the engine. This is the headlight switch, which is froze up. On the old 6 volt system, these are a three position switch. All the way in was a low charge on the battery, so if you're doing field work all day in the daylight, you just leave that on low charge. If you pulled the switch out, then the headlights came on and it would put the voltage regulator into a high charge. And I believe if you pulled it all the way out, it was headlights off and high charge. But that'll all be irrelevant for what we're doing. This switch is bad anyway, so I'm just going to be installing a simple on-off headlight switch on here. The amp gauge I'll replace. It's been replaced once before and it says John Deere on it. This hour meter is something somebody added at some point, I believe. all the complicated wiring this old tractor has to offer. Now the battery box can come off. Yeah, there's the battery box. What's left of one anyway. I think I'm going to leave all these hydraulic lines and the traction booster gauge in place for now because I don't have a good way to cap them off. So I'll just leave them until later so I don't get a bunch of dirt into the system. You get this front axle out of the way so we can get the tractor rolled outside and power wash it. Go ahead and get these tires off. Yeah, we're going to see if we can get these rotten old tires off the rims. There's one off. 
these rims are supposed to be all orange from the factory. At some point in the past, they were painted silver on the outside edge. I kind of like that look for the contrast because this is going to be a whole lot of orange. The rear rims are silver from the factory. Those wheel weights have been painted that off-white color like the newer tractors at one point. So they'll go back to orange, but the rims will stay silver. And I'm thinking orange center with the silver rims on these. You have to comment down below. Tell me what you think about that. Now we're going to try and get the axle separated from the steering gear. Torque multiplier. Best invention ever. Once these tie rods are off, you should be ready to separate the gearbox from the front axle. Use the hammer method like I did to remove them. With these castellated nuts, always make sure you put the castle part down before when you hit it with the hammer. So otherwise you'll smash them down and ruin the threads. I have a bad feeling I should have taken these dust caps off or at least got them loose before I took the wheels off. I don't know how much of a fight those are going to be to get apart. But these bearings do not feel very good on this side. I'll see if we can get these spindles off. One side out. Use a little blue persuasion on it to help it along. I didn't want to get too aggressive with the heat on that because I believe that's cast iron. I didn't want it to crack on me. See if any of these will budge. Electric's got quite a bit more snort than the old wore out air one does. Surprised those slid out by hand. Figured that would be a fight too. Well, there it is, the tractor front end and kit form. Now, when you stand back and look at this project, it's pretty intimidating, but when you break it down into manageable sizes like this, it's not so bad. Especially when you can break it down even further yet, and piece by piece. This is actually going quicker than I thought. The steering box, I think I'm going to tear apart, get all the old junk and grease out of it, and replace the seals. 
I might do an entirely separate video on that. We'll see how it goes. Well, I got this tractor tore down to the point where I can roll it outside and power wash it this weekend if it gets nice out like it's supposed to. Went ahead and got rid of the beard early this year. Hoping we should be past the bitter cold now. That's with the amount of painting I've been doing lately. The, my respirator doesn't seal very good to my face. So that means spring is coming. Sooner the better. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Catch you next time.